Hi, this is Karen Colby, and I'm coming to you today as Mother Goose. I'm bringing my friend Feathers. Feathers likes to listen to golden books and Mother Goose poems and fun children's stories. He's a good listener. He's very polite. He doesn't interrupt. He doesn't wave his hand around while I'm reading. And he waits until it's an appropriate time if he has a question. And I'm sure that boys and girls, you do the same thing because you'd be polite listeners too. The story I'm going to read today is a little golden book and it's a classic. That means it's very, very famous. This is called Toodle. And if you look at the picture, it shows you that Toodle is a what? Right, it's a little train. It's a happy little train from the picture. It's got a big smile on its face. We know that that's a pretend one because trains don't have faces, but we'll pretend that Toodle has a personality and a face. Far, far to the west of everywhere in the village of lower train switch, all the baby locomotives go there to learn how to be a big locomotive. And remember, boys and girls, a locomotive is a train. The young locomotives steam up and down the tracks, trying to call out the loud, sad toot, toot of the big locomotives. But the best they can do is a gay little tootle. Lower Train Switch has a fine school for engines. There are lessons in whistle blowing, stopping for red flag waving, puffing loudly when starting, coming around curves safely, screeching when stopping, and clicking and clacking over the rails. Those were the things that they were taught. Of all the things that are taught in the lower train switch school for locomotives, the most important, of course, is staying on the rails no matter what. The head of the school is an old engineer named Bill. Bill always tells the new locomotives that he will not be angry if they sometimes spill the soup pulling the diner, or if they turn over the milk to butter now and then. But they will never, never be good trains unless they get 100% A plus in staying on the rails no matter what. All the baby engines work very hard to get 100% A plus in staying on the rails. After a few weeks, not one of the engines in the lower train switch school for trains would even think of getting off the rails, no matter, well, no matter what. One day, a new locomotive named Toodle came to school. Here is the first baby I've seen since old number 600, said Bill. He patted the gleaming young locomotive and said, how would you like to grow up to be the flyer between New York City and Chicago? If a flyer goes very fast, I should like to be one, Toodle answered. I love to go fast. Watch me. He raced around the roundhouse. Good, good, said Bill. You must study whistle blowing, puffing loudly when starting, stopping for red flag waving, and pulling the diner without spilling the soup. But most of all, you must study staying on the rails no matter what. Remember, you can't be a flyer unless you get a hundred A plus in staying on the rails. Toodle promised he would remember and that he would work very, very hard. He did too. He even worked hard at stopping for a red flag waving. Toodle did not like those lessons at all. There is nothing a locomotive hates more than stopping. But Bill found that no locomotive ever, ever kept going when he saw a red flag waving. One day while Toodle was practicing for his lesson in staying on the rails no matter what, a dreadful thing happened. 
He looked across the meadow he was running through, and he saw a fine, strong black horse. Race you to the river, shouted the black horse, and he kicked up his heels. Away went the horse. His black tail streamed out behind him, and his mane tossed in the wind. Oh, how he could run! Here I go, said Tootle to himself. If I'm going to be a flyer, I can't let a horse beat me, he puffed. Everyone at school will laugh at me. His wheels turned so fast that they were silver streaks. The car lurched and bumped together. Just as Tootle was sure he could win, the tracks had a great curve in them. Oh, whistle, cried Tootle. That horse will beat me now. He'll run straight while I take the great curve. <gasps> then a dreadful thing happened. After all that Bill had said about staying on the rails no matter what, Tootle jumped off the tracks and raced alongside the black horse. The race ended in a tie. Both Tootle and the black horse were happy. They stood on the bank of the river and talked. It's nice here in the meadow, Tootle said. When Tootle got back to school, he said nothing about leaving the rails, but he thought about it that night when he was in the roundhouse. Tomorrow I will work hard, decided Tootle. I will not even think of leaving the rails, no matter what. And he did work hard. He practiced tootling so much that the mayor himself ran up the hill, his green coattails flapping, and he said that everyone in the village had a headache, and would he please stop tootling? So Tootle was sent to practice staying on the rails no matter what. As he came to the great curve, Tootle looked across the meadow. It was full of buttercups. Oh, it's like a big yellow carpet. How I should like to play in them and hold one under my searchlight to see if I like butter. But no, I am going to be a flyer and I must practice staying on the rails no matter what. Tootle clicked and clacked around the great curve. His wheels began to say over and over, do you like butter? Do you like butter? Do you? I don't know, said Tootle crossly, but I'm going to find out. He stopped much faster than any good flyer ever does unless he's stopping for a red flag waving. He hopped off the tracks and bumped into the meadow to the yellow buttercups. What fun, said Tootle, as he danced around and around and held one of the buttercups under his searchlight. I do like butter, cried Tootle. I do. At last, the sun began to go down, and it was time to hurry to the roundhouse. That evening, while the chief oiler was playing checkers with his old friend Bill, he said, It's strange. It's very strange. But I found grass between Tootle's front wheels today. Hmm, said Bill. There must be grass growing on the tracks. Not on our tracks, said the day watchman who spent his days watching the tracks and his nights watching Bill and Chief Euler play checkers. Bill's face was stern. Tootle knows he must get a hundred and an A plus in staying on the rails no matter what, if he's going to be a flyer. The next day, Tootle played all day in the meadow. He watched a green frog and he made a daisy chain. He found a rain barrel and he said softly, Toot, toot, shouted the barrel. Why, I sound like a flyer already, cried Tootle. That night, the first assistant oiler said he had found a daisy in Tootle's bell. The day after that, the second assistant oiler said he had found hollyhock flowers floating in Tootle's eight bowls of soup on the train. And then the mayor himself said that he had seen Tootle chasing butterflies in the meadow. 
the mayor himself said Tootle had looked very silly. Early one morning, Bill had a long, long talk with the mayor. When the mayor himself left the lower train switch school for locomotives, he laughed all the way to the village. Bill's plan will surely put Tootle back on the track, he chuckled. Bill ran from one store to the next, buying 10 yards of this and 20 yards of that. And all you have of the other, the chief oiler and the first, second, and third assistant oilers were hammering and sawing instead of oiling and polishing. And Tootle? Well, Tootle was in the meadow watching the butterflies flying and wishing he could dip and soar up and down as they did. Not a store in lower train switch was open the next day. And not a person was home. By the time the sun came up, every villager was hiding in the meadow along the tracks, and each of them had a red flag. It had taken all the red goods and lower train switch and hard work by the oilers, but there was a red flag for everyone. Soon Tootle came tootling happily down the tracks. When he came to the meadow, he hopped off the tracks and rolled along the grass. Just as he was thinking what a beautiful day it was, a red flag poked up from the grass and waved hard. Tootle stopped. For every locomotive knows, he must stop for a red flag waving. I'll go another way, said Tootle. He turned to the left, and up another waving red flag came, this time from the middle of the buttercups. Then he went to the right, and there was another red flag waving. There were red flags waving from the buttercups, in the daisies, under the trees, near the bluebird's nest, and even one behind the rain barrel. And of course, Tootle had to stop for each one, for a locomotive must always stop for a red flag waving. Red flags, mut muttered Tootle. This meadow is just full of red flags. How can I have any fun? Whenever I start, I have to stop. Why did I think this meadow was such a fine place? Why don't I ever see a green flag? Just as the tears were ready to slide out of the boiler, Tootle happened to look back over his coal car. On the track stood Bill, and in his hand was a big green flag. Oh, said Tootle. He huffed and puffed up to Bill, and he stopped. This is the place for me, said Tootle. There is nothing but red flags for locomotives that get off their tracks. Hurry, shouted the people of lower train switch and jumped up from their hiding places. Hooray for Tootle the Flyer! Now Tootle is a famous two miles a minute flyer. The young locomotive listened to his advice. Work hard, he tells them. Always remember to stop for a red flag waving, but most of all, stay on the rails no matter what. He learned his lesson, didn't he? He was told to stay on the rails no matter what, but he didn't listen. He looked at things like buttercups and daisies and things along the side, but he wasn't following the directions, was he? When someone teaches you to do something, you need to follow directions. We know that. When our teacher says to put your name on the top of the paper and answer the questions, that's what we do. We try to do our very, very best. For Tootle, it was to stay on the rails no matter what. And he finally got the message and listened and did what he was supposed to do, didn't he? And then everybody in the town was happy and Bill was happy and Tootle was happy. I like that story, and I hope that you like that story, too. <laughs>